okay. In this lecture we will see uh, some more pointer arithmetic operators and uh, we will introduce those by uh, talking about them through a problem. Okay. So, the problem that I have is that of reversing an array. So, we have to write a function to reverse an array and um, let us say that the declaration of the function is void reverse array int a int n. Okay. Now, if you have to reverse an array what is one way to do it you take the array copy it into another array and then copy it back in the reverse fashion. So, you have an array a copy all the values into b and now you copy those values back to a in the following way that the b b's last value will go to a of 0, b's second va last value will go to a of 1 and so on. Okay. Now, let us try to do it slightly more cleverly. Uh, we want to take an integer array and reverse the array in place. Okay. That means that essentially using no extra space. So, do not use an extra array in order to reverse it, reverse it within A itself. Okay. So, the array before calling reverse array will look like A 0 up to A n minus 1 in this way and after calling reverse array it should look like A n minus 1, A n minus 2 etcetera up to A 0 and in doing that we should not use an extra array. So, how do we do this? Uh, Let us look at a uh, bunch of con uh, couple of concrete examples to see how do how do we do it by hand okay, and then we will try to code that algorithm. So, in this there are two cases. So, for example, what happens when you have an even length array when you have let us say 6 elements then A 0 and A 5 have to be exchanged. A 5 goes to A 0, A 5 goes to the 0th location, A 0 goes to the 6th uh, location or the 5th location and then A 1 and A 4 have to be exchanged, A 2 and A 3 have to be exchanged. After this you should stop right that will correctly reverse the array. Now, what happens if the case of in the case of an odd length array. So, suppose you have an array B which has only 5 elements. In that case to reverse the array you have to exchange B 0 and B 4, B 1 and B 3 and you can stop there because there is no need to exchange B 2 with itself. right? So, the case of an odd length array uh, you will end up with an element which does not need to be touched. In the case of an even length array you have to exchange until you reach the middle of the array. Let us try to code this up. Okay, so, how is the reverse array written? Uh, first I need, uh, so remember how we did this by hand. Uh, we exchange the 0th location with the last location, then we exchange the first location with the second last location and so on. So, it is easy to code if you have two pointers initially one pointer starts to at the beginning of the array, the second pointer is to the last of the array exchange those values. Then the first pointer goes to the next location and the second pointer goes to the previous location ok. That is how we did it by hand. So, let us try to code that up. I will have a pointer B which points to the last element of the array a plus n minus 1. Okay. Now, the loop is as follows I will discuss this in a minute while b is greater than a. So, uh, remember in the example by hand we had to exchange till we reach the middle of the array. Now, how do we find the middle of the array? I will just write it as b greater than a and I will explain it in a minute. So, while this is true that you have not yet reached the middle of the array, you exchange uh, swap a and b. Here we use the swap function which we have seen in the previous lecture. Okay. So, for example, it will swap the 0th element with the n minus first element. After that is done, you increment a and you decrement b. Okay. So, the design logic is that a initially points to the first element of the array, the left end of the array and B points to the right end of the array. 
in general while the algorithm happens then A is moving forward and B is moving backward. Inside the loop you exchange star A with star B ok that is what is accomplished by calling swap of A and B because swap A and B will dereference those locations and exchange the values there. So, do this repeatedly until A and B cross over because the when A is moving forward and B is moving backward then the middle of the array is the point where A and B cross over or the point where A and B meet ok. So, this is the very simple logic for reversing an array. Now, I have left one thing unexplained what do I mean by B greater than A? B and A are pointers. So, what do I mean by pointer B is greater than pointer A? So, we need to explain that we are introducing an operation an operator on two pointers what does it mean ok. So, we are seeing a new concept which is relational comparison between two pointers. If A and B are pointers to variables of the same type like in star A and in star B we can compare them uh, compare these pointers using uh, equal to and not equal to ok. This can be done for arbitrary locations A and B as long as those locations are of the same type. So, A equal to B is true if and only if A and B are pointing to the same location that is natural to expect. Otherwise, if they are pointing to different locations A not equal to B is true ok. Now, there is another case if A is pointing to an integer let us say and B is pointing to a float then equal to and not equal to are undefined. So, notice that even though this behavior looks natural it is natural only if they are pointing to the same type ok. So, here are operations equal to and not equal to. What about less than less than or equal to greater than greater than or equal to and so on and this is surprising ok because here is something that you do not expect you cannot uh, compare less than less than or equal to on arbitrary locations in the memory ok. We can compare A and B using uh, less than for this they must be pointing to the same locations in the array. Earlier when we discussed plus and minus uh, we were saying that uh, plus and minus are well behaved only when you are navigating within an array ok. Similarly, when we are comparing two pointers using greater than greater than or equal to less than less than or equal to then they should all be point then A and B should be pointing to the same array different locations in the same array. If that is true then A is less than B if A is pointing to a location which is before B in the same array. Okay. Similarly, A less than or equal to B is true if A is pointing to a location uh, which is B or before B and so on. So, for example, we can say that if we have an array int A 10 then A plus 1 is less than A plus 2 ok that is clearly true because A plus 1 is pointing to the uh, location 1 in array and A plus 2 is pointing to location 2 in the array. Okay. So, if you have an array for example, let us say A 0 through A 9 and uh, PTR A is pointing to location 1 and PTR B is pointing to location 3 then PTR A is less than PTR B. Okay. Here the comparison is well defined and it is true, but on the other hand let us say that uh, PTR A is pointing to A of 1 and PTR B is pointing to B of 1 ok. In this case PTR A less than PTR B is undefined because they are pointing to two different arrays ok. So, maybe in memory uh, A is laid out before B and so on, but that is not what the less than or equal to operation is supposed to do. It is supposed to compare pointers only within the same array. So, with this understanding let us understand how the reverse array works. 
So, in the first iteration you have uh, an array A, let us say that the array is 101, 21 and so on, it has 6 locations okay. and uh, we will run through the trace of the uh, execution for an even length array and I would encourage you to create an odd length array and trace through the executions to ensure that the code works for odd length arrays as well. So, in this uh, lecture we will do it for an even length array. So, A is initially pointing to the beginning of the array, B is pointing to the end of the array, A plus n minus 1 will go to uh, the end of the array. Right. Now, B is greater than A that is true. So, we will enter the loop and in the first iteration we will swap A and B. Okay. So, it will go to the swap uh, function and this is the fu uh, swap function that actually works from the previous video. So, you can assume that A 0 will be swapped with A 1. So, they were initially 1 0 1 and 0 and after swap they will be 0 and 1 0 1. Okay. Now, once that happens A advances by 1 integer location, B goes back by 1 integer location. Okay. So, this is the state after the first iteration. In the second iteration, you start with A at 21 and B at minus 101. Again, B is greater than A, so you swap. Okay. So, 21 minus 101 becomes minus 101 and 21. Okay. So, they are swapped and you advance A by 1 and you take back B by 1. Again, B is greater than A, so you go to the third iteration. In the third iteration, this is the state at the beginning of the iteration and you swap these contents. So, you swap minus 1 and 121, it becomes this becomes the state of the array and once that is done, <coughs> B overshoots. So, B, B goes before A and A go, goes after B. So, I have denoted that with two colored arrows. So, here is the B arrow, it goes to location 121 and the uh, A arrow goes to location minus 1. When this happens, B is now less than A. Okay. So, this means that you have crossed the middle of the array. Therefore, you should stop now. So, now B is less than A and the loop terminates. And we have seen that this correctly reverse the array. So, here is how the reverse array works. Uh, we have seen the concept of uh, relational comparison operators using uh, pointers, how they make sense when they are pointing to locations within the same array and how that can be used to write code uh, using arrays. Uh, 